The Thargoid Maelstrom is a new and largely unknown place with unique and specific challenges that any ship needs to overcome to delve its depths. Being able to spend a large amount of time in this environment is helpful for collecting essential research and engineering materials that may expose how to delve deeper and survive longer within the storm. A maelstrom confronts approaching ships with several challenges that are intended to discourage intruders. The first is the Proteus field, a persistent distortive effect that is visible on UI elements of any ship that enters the system. This effect will constantly damage any module on your ship that bears the Guardian icon, including Guardian power plants and module reinforcements. Ships that enter a Maelstrom system must be capable of operating without the assistance of any Guardian technology. The second challenge is the physical location of a Maelstrom within a host system. These anomalies orbit planetary bodies and favor ammonia worlds within the systems they inhabit, requiring ships to slow down and maneuver around the planets to get to them. This extra approach time makes it very difficult to get to a Maelstrom without being harassed by Thargoids in supercruise. These patrols are more dense in maelstrom systems, and are always hostile. The only effective way to manage these ships is to outrun them. The target to aim for is 550 meters per second. If you can boost to that speed, then Thargoids in a maelstrom system aren't going to be able to catch you in real space. But they will keep interdicting you every few minutes. Best practice here is to submit to the interdiction, boost away, and then jump again. It takes a few minutes for the Thargoids to reacquire you, but they will at repeating intervals until you leave, die, or reach the maelstrom itself. Note that while approaching a maelstrom, safe disengage behavior functions differently, with an initial drop that is over-accelerated. It's possible to crash drop at low speeds in a similar way to entering a ring system. Either method works, and will deposit the player in roughly the same location regardless. Once at the boundary of a maelstrom, Thargoid behavior changes. Thargoids will no longer randomly drop in following your ship's low wake, as they would if you dropped at other locations within a system. There are interceptors within the cloud, along with other defenses, which can be aggressive and somewhat unpredictable. The first defense of a maelstrom cloud is a passive caustic effect, which is unavoidable, and which ramps up the farther into a caustic cloud that ships venture. The rate of base caustic damage is the same as would be imparted by scouts and their low-yield caustic missiles. The baseline effect is easily ignored by larger, more armored ships, but is a threat to smaller ones. To measure this effect, I built a sidewinder specifically to gauge the degradation rate within the cloud. Engineered to have exactly 100 hull, this sidewinder was flown into the cloud to trigger base caustic damage, and then monitored until the hull failed completely. This process took 1 minute 17 seconds. But for easy math and safety buffers, we'll use 1 minute 15 seconds as the maximum survival time per 100 absolute hull, assuming no caustic damage resistance and no additional damage is added. This means that a ship with 1,000 hull can last about 12 and a half minutes at the most before hull degradation becomes fatal. Decontamination and repair limpets do work inside the cloud, and can offset the passive caustic effects of the cloud, extending the amount of time that a ship can operate within the cloud before eventually being driven out by the hostile environment. If you have a ship that can fit them, these limpets are an excellent tool, in addition to a collector limpet controller, as there are collectibles that can be retrieved from the cloud which will be necessary at some point in the future. Within the maelstrom are a number of defenses which trigger under specific conditions. The first are these caustic generators. These objects appear small, but are actually comparable in size to a large ship. Despite their size, these objects don't appear on sensors until you are within the danger zone. If a ship gets close enough, the generator will self-destruct, releasing an impulse blast that disables thrusters and will significantly damage ship hulls. These generators lack the regenerative armor of Thargoid interceptors making them vulnerable to conventional weapons and relatively fragile. These generators can be destroyed reasonably easily, though their self-destruct is a nasty bugger with a deceptively far reach. Long-range or focused beam lasers are the weapon of choice here, allowing these generators to be dispatched from beyond their threat radius. Caustic generators release collectible materials when destroyed. 
Collector limpets are recommended for harvesting these materials and other materials that can be found floating freely within the maelstrom. Thargoid interceptors roam the interior of maelstrom clouds with behaviors that are unpredictable. Interceptors can become immediately hostile on ship detection or may elect to ignore you completely. I was not able to determine exactly what set off unprovoked aggression. Interceptors are still vulnerable to normal AX weapons and will engage if provoked. Though combat within this environment will be significantly disadvantaged and is not recommended as a casual venture. Maelstroms also impart a turbulent effect on approaching ships. This effect is subtle along the fringes, but ramps up along with the caustic damage farther in. Ship thrusters struggle to compensate for this turbulence in the deepest parts of a maelstrom with flight assist on, and are much harder to control with flight assist off. This effect is similar in nature to the turbulence encountered within a neutron star jet cone, and will render careful shot placement and precision maneuvering much more difficult especially at high speeds. Ships engaging interceptors should avoid accidental dives towards the heart of the storm. Caustic damage and control distortion ramp up as ships approach the heart of a maelstrom. Caustic damage effects rise to levels comparable to the aftermath of destroyed interceptors. Deep dives should be timed carefully, and any exploration efforts to this part of the cloud should expect significant damage. Caustic effects here are capable of overwhelming typical caustic countermeasures, though countermeasures can still dampen total damage absorbed. Passing beyond a certain point will trigger a pulse from the heart of the maelstrom. This pulse is the most dangerous active defense within the cloud, inflicting significant hull damage, triggering a system shutdown, and violently ejecting intruders from the core of the cloud back towards its boundary. A shutdown field neutralizer will prevent a total system failure, but will not prevent engine failure, knockback impulse, or hull damage. At time of writing, there is no way to defend against the heart pulse. Yet. The current best reason to enter a maelstrom is to collect specific materials unique to the environment. When the materials arrived, a new synthesis recipe was added to the game referencing something called a caustic sink, which is likely to aid us against the Thargoids, but at the time of writing, isn't available for sale anywhere in the galaxy. Stealth-based hull tanks are ideal for the environment of a caustic cloud. AXI cold orbiting builds make a great starting point, but will need to have Guardian components removed. Thargoids struggle to detect ships with low overall heat signatures. The colder, the better. Hull tanks are also able to cook off caustic damage in a hurry more often than any type of shielded ship can. There is also the potential for interactions that haven't been discovered yet, since the Maelstrom is a new phenomenon attached to new behaviors. Frontier said in a recent livestream that the Maelstroms are the coordinating center of the Thargoid invasions that spread out from them. This strongly implies that at some point in the near future, action will be taken against the Maelstroms directly, to destroy, drive away, or render them inert. What form these mechanics take is an open question but the next month or two will be interesting regardless. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.